Hey savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here and today we'll be exploring Linux news. We're looking at the wonderful world of Linux and we will be checking into the latest updates in Linux. Welcome, welcome everyone who's joining in and stopping by to watch this today. What I will first explore here is we'll be talking about Ubuntu 16.04 and the new installer coming to Ubuntu. The first thing I want to mention is Ubuntu 16.04 long-term support from Canonical has announced that they're going to be uh, phasing into the ESM phase of Ubuntu 16.04. Since they're about to enter the five-year mark, it's dropping the long-term support going into the ESM phase. So if you're using 16.04 and you still need that long-term support, make sure to check out ESM. For those of you that don't already know, 16 in Ubuntu 16 stands for the year. So 2016 and 04 means the month. We're in 2021. That's five years and that's how much long-term support comes for. Welcome everyone. Snake Jazz, welcome to the Linux news cycle today. I forgot to play my intro music. It's been quite a um, quite interesting today. Trying to get things set up. I was uh, rushing a little bit. Um, and turns out I <laughs> had installed a brand new uh, Arch Linux uh, installation because of that video that I just recently did. If you haven't checked it out, absolutely check it out because I have an amazing X Monad set up by Xvara, who uh, is a contributor uh, to our Discord community, has set up an amazing, an amazing. Um, custom X monad setup for us. So again, check that video out. So basically I was doing the fastest speed run of my life trying to get everything back up. I was missing everything and anything, including graphics drivers, audio drivers, <laughs> absolutely everything was missing on my computer at that point. Uh, so I'm glad I even got this stream going today and I'm very happy to be here with everyone. So with that being said, smash that like button right now because we're going to uh, continue on. So I mentioned ESM a little bit. That stands for Extended Security Maintenance for those of you who don't know that. And this allows uh, people and even companies, really paying companies, to enter a paid period of time or there is actually somehow you can get around that paid period being part of the Ubuntu here community. Um and what that does is there's extended security updates, even though uh, a long-term support version of Ubuntu is expired. This is really smart on, you know, Canonical's part, as you can see here. You know, they're, they're used by quite, uh, quite some of the big shots here, uh, flexing on us with Amazon, Microsoft Azure, AT&T, Google Cloud, and Netflix. So companies like this who might have uh, put in a lot of, uh, time, effort, and mo money to infrastructure with, you know, maybe an older uh, version of Ubuntu and uh, don't want to upgrade to a newer release of that operating system causing, you know, disruptions and stuff like that. They have this ability to use ESM. So uh, it's, it's quite interesting. I didn't actually know about ESM until recently. So if you don't know about it, check it out a little bit, especially if you are messing around with uh, packaging stuff and actually using Ubuntu in a productive environment. I'll also mention today that there is a fresh new Ubuntu desktop installer coming to us. Uh, I believe it's going to be available here in uh, 2104 uh, coming, uh, let's see, next, is that next month? Yes, next month. So that's kind of exciting. There is a plan, a rationale, and if we read the rationale, so why do they need a brand new desktop installer? What's the point? Well, it's really just to make things more consistent than what they're using uh, today. The style does, just doesn't add up with the Yaru style. So uh, I think that's really the biggest reason they say, we have evaluated existing desktop installer projects and toolkits our goal is to deliver a consistent installer experience across the Ubuntu product portfolio. They're going to use Flutter here. 
and they're going to leverage existing work of the Yaru team to ensure that the new installer is consistent with the Ubuntu desktop style. So be on the lookout for this brand new Ubuntu desktop installer. I'm excited to check it out. It does look pretty good. Notice how we don't have screenshots available somehow. They have broken links on their discourse community website. It's too bad, but we'll definitely check that out. Sandro has a question. Xmonad is your favorite desktop so far. I like Cinnamon quite a bit. Yeah, I do like the Xmonad uh, window manager. It's quite beautiful. And mainly I like it because of the design here that Oxvara did. Uh, make sure to check out that video and smash that like button for me right now. If you're new and stopping by today, I'd appreciate it if you would go down below and subscribe for more Linux videos as well as program videos, operating system videos. We have all on this channel. We stream weekly. We have uh, much, much fun across the community. Mitchell Valentino says, uh, super savvy Nick bringing the Linux news that matters. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, so we'll continue on real quick. Thanks everyone who's stopping in and stopping by. Uh, I didn't show you the picture of the installer. Here's a picture of the installer. It looks pretty fresh. I gotta, I gotta give it to them. Uh, hopefully they just keep making it easier on us to install Ubuntu because there's a lot of distributions that follow suit on Ubuntu and what better way to get more users on there than making that install process as easy as possible for them. It's a great thing that they're redesigning this. Although it might just really be a refresher on the GUI inside of things, but oh well, I'm still excited about it. So perhaps the most thing I'm excited about is this Thelio Mira new System76 desktop PC. I've covered the System76 Thelio, a, um, a very powerful Linux computer that comes standard with Pop! OS or Ubuntu. But uh, today we'll be checking out the Thelio Mira. Mira. I've uh, just seen this uh, kind of released here on their website. Uh, I'm excited to look at it. I haven't looked at it uh, myself. Um, I'm very interested also to see what kind of uh, lead times they have, especially with these graphics card shortages. Um, it's, <laughs> it's pretty funny to me how, how backtrack some of these... Um, some of these uh, vendors have to be because of just shortages across the board. Uh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> Don't forget to give Sa Savvy the thumbs up finger. <laughs> uh, yes, the new Thelio just dropped. So uh, let's check it out. It says the introducing new Thelio Mega Quad GPU workstation. Quad GPU. Now that's freaking amazing. Clearly there's going to be four... Uh, up to four graphics processing units in this thing. That's that's insane. You can't even get one nowadays. I don't know how they're going to get you four, but they're they're tooting, <laughs> tooting off for themselves here. I'll make sure to uh, post a link to that. Let's see if I can get that for us here. Um, nah, I can't get it right now, but. No big deal. We'll go through the uh, tech specs here in a moment. Let me just uh, get something going here for myself. All right. Why quad GPU? That's a great question. I'm not sure what you're going to be doing with this thing. But if you're out here buying this Thelio Mega, I don't think you're worried about spending money. Uh, <laughs> uh, not at all. Joseph, that's a great question. And also, if you do have any questions on Linux or stuff that you want to bring out, a shout out perhaps, please post it in the chat. I'm uh, very open to uh, talking about this live here. I try to keep these a little bit shorter than uh, some of my other streams. But um, so I'm, again, I'm super excited to check this one out because I will never be able to afford it. But it looks amazing. The computer itself looks pretty sick here if you just kind of look at it. Um, the possible specs on this thing are absolutely mind-blowing. Here's just a little bit of a teaser here. Um, and it, the fact that it comes pre-installed with Linux is super sweet. I'm a fan of System76's Pop! OS. It's definitely in my top three 
uh, distros of all time. I know that's controversial there, but I'm going to say it anyway, of all time. Uh, I am doing great. Thank you very much, Tech. Best Wi-Fi driver for Linux. I'm not sure what you're asking there. I'm uh, doing, doing well. So let's see. We have a teaser quad GPU compute workstation, multi-core thread ripper with up to three CPUs. We're not talking cores, we're talking CPUs. 20, 256 gigabytes of ECC memory up to, I assume. PCI Express 4.0, the NVMe storage. So you can get NVMe solid state drives on this sucker. Of course you can, why not? So uh, let's keep rolling through. This thing looks sleek with this curved monitor setup. Gotta say, lo loving how they're just flexing on us. This must be somewhere in their studio because they're probably about the only ones who can afford this thing at this point. Uh, it says starting at $7,499. You heard that right. A $7,500 computer. I assume uh, there's taxes on top of that getting you close to eight grand. Uh, let's talk about the advanced thermal system. So what do they got here? Uh, are actually two separate systems as we found it more efficient to divide and conquer. They have a unique airflow that uh, keeps the heat that's generated by the CPU and GPU from mixing. Interesting. So they have a different exhaust system here that uh, prevents throttling because they separate the... Um, the air flows between the GPU and the CPU so they don't mix and create more uh, heat and they have to dissipate that heat together. Instead, they dissipate that heat separately. That's something very interesting. I wasn't uh, very aware. I know, look at what a beast is <laughs> exactly right. Um, and it does sound super sick. So full core GPU compute. We have open bench CPU performance, quiet adaptive cooling, they're touting. So let's just check this out real quick. Yes, you see it here on the right-hand side. They've put in eight solid-state disks, disks, and they've put in eight GP, or sorry, I take that back, four GPUs. So if we read on the left-hand side, up to four NVIDIA Quadro GPUs, up to 128 CPU threads. It's got the long-term support. Not sure what they're touting there, but it's also cloud-friendly, as, of course, any computer is cloud-friendly, so I don't know why they're touting that. Instead, they should be just focused on this monster of a hardware solution that they have from System76. If you're just stopping in, smash that like button. We're talking about the System76 Thelio Mega that has just recently been released. Welcome, welcome, everyone. Let me check out the chat a little bit. All right, not much going on there. Okay, so on here, let's see, we'll do, so it's got up to a 32, it can support up to a 32 terabyte M.2 NVMe, so those little small guys, <laughs> up to 40 terabytes of additional storage, so we're looking at 72 terabytes of storage on hot swappable uh, 2.5 inch drive, solid state drives, I assume. Cooled aluminum drive cages, keep your drives cool. Let's keep going in here. We have easy serviceability. Look at that beautiful <laughs> setup that they've done. Looks like they're thinking about, uh, ah, they got you in mind, I guess, with side panel access, pre-wired for upgrades, never lose screws again. <laughs> I guess they don't uh, part ways with the actual fixture, which is kind of uh, kind of a good thing, I guess. Uh, they, they put a lot of thought into the overall design. I hope they would with something that would cost you $7,500 or a car lease at $252 a month. <laughs> Chris Penguin has a Chromebook. You're getting close to this sucker, that's for sure. And Mr. Snod definitely can't afford that, neither can I, but it's nice to dream, isn't it? We'll keep looking at this. It's handcrafted in Denver, Colorado, so you're supporting the states if you buy one of these suckers. It says it's got a rigid aluminum 
cut, powder-coated, molded into a light, durable chassis. Uh, absolutely beautiful. We can look at a few more pictures here. Uh, very exciting. I just, I like the fact that they have some powerhouse like this available specifically with Linux in mind and Linux pre-installed ready for you to go. It's, uh, it just gets me excited a little bit. You know, if Apple can do it, why can't System76 do it? If anything, this is quite awesome. Of course, Pop! OS comes standard with this sucker and you can download, well, and install Pop! OS on your normal computer that you have right now. It's one of the best distros out there in my opinion. Uh, definitely check it out if you never have Pop! OS by S System76 and you know that they're tuning that operating system to their hardware. Uh, it only makes sense. All right, so we'll continue on here. You get different types of colors that you can uh, get on the sucker. Um, and here's kind of uh, some of the specs of what it has. So it's got the choice of uh, Ubuntu or Papa West, the latest. And then we have a processor, which is the third gen Ryzen Threadripper series. I'm interested in what kind of... Um, what kind of base clock cycle that one has. Up to four NVIDIA graphics. We already talked about that. It tells you here what types you can have. Um, we'll continue on to memory. DDR4 at 3200 megahertz, up to 256 gigabytes. That's a, that's a monster. Up to 72 terabytes we talked about. Some rear ports, so it's got up to seven USB 3.2 gen uh, ports. It's got some audio jacks, some networking support here. It looks like two RJ45 ports with built-in uh, Wi-Fi AC and a Bluetooth 5.0. The power supply is 1,600 watts. Amazing. Amazing. It's, uh, let's see, that's a fair size here at 18 point, uh, I'm going to call it 9 inches by 10.3. And the depth here is 17.24. <laughs> Amazing. All right. Well, at some other point, uh, my idea is to go ahead and try designing and buying the most expensive one. I've done this in the past with another video of mine. I'll have to uh, share that link in the description below afterwards. Welcome everyone to Linux News here with Savvy Nick. I hope you're having a great day. Uh, buy a vacuum cleaner that can suck in the 4K would be a great deal. <laughs> Why would uh, one such buy such a beast computer hardcore gaming or work the only thing i can think of is rendering some crazy rendering that you're doing maybe just maybe you'll be able to use this uh hardware but this is so overkill for anybody i gotta agree with snod there <laughs> that's more than the 15 amp breaker that's true well, let me let's uh <laughs> that's a good mention yeah, you're gonna you're gonna need to hook that up, possibly even to a breaker that supplies uh, power to your uh, dishwasher or <laughs> or the uh, washer and dryer or or maybe even the stove at that point. Maybe a 30 amp. Well, I mean, you're gonna have to go to at least 30 amp breaker on that sucker. Maybe you can find some oddball uh, breaker in between. Anyways. If you have any comments, questions, shout outs, make sure to post them in the chat. We're going to be moving on now. This was the Thelio Mega. It was, it's an absolute monster. Check it out for yourself. Uh, you don't, there are actual affordable options with System76. If you go to their website, they do have uh, various different uh, laptops, desktops, other types of um, PCs, all that come with Linux. Uh, this one is way better at uh, almost 1100 bucks here. Nice laptop, 15.6 inch matte display. It's uh, pretty <laughs> pretty nice. Yeah, play <laughs> Yandamine play Velerin at 500 <laughs> frames per second. <laughs> oh, it's funny. Yeah, that's that's. <laughs> I guess you could uh, go ahead and grab it for Velerin. Why not? Let let me know if you do. I'd I'd love to chat with you. All right, so. We'll move on to, let's check out the documentation for the MESA 3D graphics drivers version 21 here. Uh, the first thing we'll just check out is the announcement page, the MESA dev announcement. MESA 21 has been released. It's finally here, MESA 21. And <laughs> let's see, 
looks like Dylan here is saying, and there was much rejoicing. <laughs> All right, short on time, didn't really tell us much about it, but that's why we have the dev page here. If you're super into uh, looking in the um, technical aspects here of the Mesa 20. One drivers, you can check it out here on the release pages of docs.mesa3d.org. Release notes, um, quite a lot done here. Basically, a lot of jargon that uh, I think 90% of people don't understand, but that's all right. So, for those of you who are using Mesa drivers, you might want to check out an upgrade to Mesa 21, but maybe wait until 2101 because it's not quite ready as far as a stable version goes. So if you want something that's stable, you still want to uh, stay uh, using the older drivers uh, for the time being. But uh, soon enough, we'll have 2101, which is, I believe, going to be considered a stable version here. All right. So a quick story about how uh, I was late today. We had, uh, well, I had such trouble because I logged on to my computer about 15 uh, minutes before uh, posting or really going live, let's say, when I was supposed to go live. And I realized that I had wiped my entire Arch Linux uh, setup so I could do a video last week. And uh, I forgot that I did that. So I was like, oh, I'll just hop on my computer and start. Uh, you know, the live stream fairly quickly. Well, it turns out I had to reinstall all my drivers, including my graphics drivers and my audio drivers. And um, I was missing all my tools, like my streaming software. I wasn't logged into anything. So I was in an absolute speed run to try getting this out as quickly as possible. That's why I was a little late today. Welcome everyone to the stream. If you're just stopping in, stopping by, make sure to smash that like button. We're about to break 10k subscribers i'm so excited about it um maybe some of you are as well definitely the people who have been contributing to the community coming back watching these videos thank you so much we're about to we're about to shatter that 10k uh where i don't know how many were away maybe 80 people 80 90 people so if you're not subscribed please subscribe I know that most of you aren't subscribed because uh, it's about 90, I think it's 94% of people aren't subscribed that visit the channel, which is quite fascinating. Anyways, let's keep going here. Uh, I bet you could make the power go out. Yeah, you could, probably could. You'd definitely at least blow a fuse or a, a breaker. <laughs> uh, can, I, can it run Far Cry Remastered though? That's a real question. Or what about Cyberpunk? Isn't that the one where everybody's having trouble trying to run? <laughs> Uh, can't say I've played any of them. Crisis 3 at 8K, 60 frames per second. Ooh. What about Far Cry Remastered at 8K, 100 frames per second? Uh, I'd love to see someone try it. Someone with uh, a lot of money. <laughs> All right. We'll uh, keep moving on here. Um, so we talked a little bit about the Mesa 3D and how that's uh, released for any of you using it. Check it out. Um, we will exit out and then let's talk about 7-Zip. So an official port has been released to Linux from Igor Pavlov, the creator of 7-Zip. There already, of course, is a version of 7-Zip that's been uh, available on Linux for Linux users. But it wasn't the official 7-Zip. It was called P7-Zip. And Igor now says that things are similar but different. Mainly, it seems like the P7-Zip project has just become inactive over the last four to five years. So it seems there's been improvements and those have been shared with us now. So if you're using Zip or 7-Zip, you might want to check this project out. Uh, you can download a tar XZ file, a compressed uh, archive file here of the various different versions available. There is uh, four versions. They're all console base, so no GUIs available here. We have the 64-bit version for the x86 instruction set, instruction set for 64-bit computers, or also known as the AMD 64. We have an ARM 64 version, a 32-bit version for x86 instruction sets, and finally, um, it looks like the ARM HF, I forget what HF stands for, but another 32-bit available. 
architecture. So it says here, it's the first version of my port of 7-zip to Linux. Very exciting. Thank you, Igor. And it's similar, but it's not identical. Please write any bugs or problems on this new Linux version of 7-zip. You can also run a benchmark here that's given by Igor, and you can attach that file to help uh, show off <laughs> your benchmarks using 7-zip. It's quite, uh, quite awesome. Uh, Chris says, uh, 7-zip? Nah, file roller. Yeah. <laughs> I tried Arco Linux on my desktop PC with no internet. I installed a few things of Pac-Man and my entire desktop went kaboom. Yeah, that sounds about right. At least uh, your first few times it always seems to happen like that. I'm planning on removing Arco Linux with Debian. Interesting. So you're going to Debian, I assume. And yeah, I love Pac-Man myself, especially with the AUR. If you go install something like the AUR helper, yay, you get all those um, Arch user repository um, packages available to you, which are quite amazing, makes things very easy to install. And of course, Pac-Man itself is very powerful and easy to use, user-friendly. But I'm in complete agreement there. But mainly that's it uh, as far as uh, 7-Zip goes. A lot of people excited about this, um, especially, of course, the people who use 7-Zip. I'm not a big user on 7-Zip. I usually like using uh, XZ for my uh, Linux file compression. But it's something new. So we've uh, kind of explored uh, the various things I wanted to check out today. I'll give a few moments for anyone and everyone to post in the chat if they got something to explore or something they want to bring up real quick that we can talk about. Otherwise, I will be ending it soon here. Uh, again, thanks everyone for stopping in and I want to have, say a special thanks to Xvara for supplying that beautiful um, GitHub. Let's see if we can pull that up. It's... Um, Let's see if we can get this. Let's see. Hope everyone's doing all right today. And I think I've found it here. It's uh, github.com dot files. Here we go. And dots from a noble lineage of cats. If you haven't checked this one out already, I've made a video on how to install this beautiful X Monad setup. You won't regret installing it because it is amazing. The animations are smooth. It's available for Gentoo. It's available for Arch Linux. There's a simple install script. It takes a little while to install, but it's well worth your time. So make sure to check this out uh, and support X Arva and their amazing setup. I'll leave you with a little bit of a, let's see, tease here on the video going, and we'll keep this up here just to see kind of their menus that are available. They got Rafi set up on this. It, it, it does look absolutely beautiful. All right, Arco has about 2K programs installed. Why so much? Uh, so Arco, Arco, Arco. I think that's the one by Eric. Um, they just want to be as customizable as possible. They want to give you every desktop environment, every tool known to man already kind of there. Um, it's an interesting strategy. I'm not, I'm not super excited about Arco and I never was just because uh, it's too much, too much. Everything's, it's kind of all over the place. There's the documentation is hard to follow and read. Even the website's a little bit, uh, it's just not the setup the greatest. I'm not bagging on Arco necessarily, but I just, I don't personally like using it because I feel like it's a little all over the place. Um, so that's all I have to say about that one. Sandro, uh, let's see, the way I installed a few things with USB tethering with my phone, which is very cool. I tried to install again too through Debian and remove Fedora. I have triple boot on my computer desktop. Yeah, I recently had like six different operating systems all flying on my physical uh, computer and I finally got rid of most of it. I successfully restored a partition image from MX Linux to Q4 OS in the VM. Now I should be able ready to back up my Linux Mint partition and swap it over to the X4 OS, or sorry, Q4 OS 3.14 Plasma. Should be interesting. Awesome. 
Is there any Arch-based distro equal to Arch itself? No. The simple answer is no. Um, not in my opinion. <laughs> Absolutely not, but the closest thing, at least in my opinion, with a minimal desktop environment that you can get, um, I don't know if, yeah, I think Openbox is considered a desktop environment, but uh, it's Arch Labs. I like using that one. It's fairly minimal. Uh, it doesn't get in the way of, you know, throwing a bunch of stuff on your computer, and then uh, the whole point of Arch is that it's minimal. You get to set it up by yourself. You get to learn about how the operating system uh, kind of works, how the file system's laid out, all that fun stuff. So there's no replacement for Arch Linux. If you're going to, um, if you want to take that much of a deep dive, you might as well just install it yourself. Don't bother using the install scripts. Don't bother, you know, installing it from uh, another distribution that has Arch as its base. Just go doing it, uh, you know, just install it by yourself. There's plenty of videos out there. I'll say that I have like four different videos uh, one for MBR, one for UEFI, and then I have like two more for how to set up UEFI dual boot with uh, Windows 10. So check those out. All right. So I actually tried Arch Labs, but for some reason it interfered with another machine. I don't know what happened. Interesting. Well, that's, uh, let's see. Was there anything else that we wanted to cover? I think we've been going on for a little bit now. I will be, I'm glad uh, that everyone was able to make it here today. It's really awesome to see everyone. Tomorrow, I do plan on having another stream. Uh, we'll be playing Velerin. If you haven't played it with us, make sure to check out Velerin at Velerin.net. We can explore that real quick as well. Velerin.net is a free and open source game available to anyone and everyone. We have uh, a weekly parties here in the game. Last week we broke broke the server having like 14 or 15 people in one party hanging out, having fun. Of course, it is free, open source, and available for Linux. So go get it today. You got nothing to lose, right? Right. So, um, yeah. All right. Well, again, thanks for stopping by. And this is Savvy Nick signing in and signing out and maybe signing in next week. Either way, make sure to subscribe below and make sure to smash that like button. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.